Hi everyone, welcome to The Knitting Loft. I'm Bruna, this is my daughter Maria, and we are the owners of The Knitting Loft, which is a local yarn shop and knitting cafe located in Toronto, Canada. We opened in September 2018, and we are here recording episode three of our podcast, Yay. which is very exciting. So we are going to dive right in to our um, progress in our projects that we last showed you in episode two. Uh, stay tuned to the end because we have some product updates and a fun giveaway to talk about. And before we dive in, I just wanted to mention because some people were asking where our show notes were. Um, if you actually just click the caption here on our YouTube video, you'll be able to see um, all of our show notes there. So uh, it is organized by time. So if you ever see us talking about something 15 minutes in, instead of you having to look through all of the words, you can just scroll through the times in 15 minutes and the link should be right there. So we have links to products on our website and links to our Ravelry notes, which we are working really hard to keep up to yeah. date with. So um, let's get started with finished Ooh. objects. So me? You, okay. You're up. Okay, so in the last episode, uh, I was knitting up um, Waves of Change jacket. Um, I showed this on the last oh, podcast that I had just started it. And um, so I had just basically cast on at that point, right? And um, so it's completely done now. It is all done now. So hopefully you can see it. Marie, help me hold yeah. it up because I'm not uh, keep it straight. So it absolutely this is so was a nice. joy to knit. This is actually a really, really nice pattern. Um, I can see this pattern, a lot of different yarns being used for this pattern. It really, really was a fun knit. Uh, the yarn obviously was just glorious. <laughs> so this is uh, Cozy Posy's um, uh, three, it's three bases of hers. So we had the Fancy, the Fluff, and then her Single Ply, yep. uh, which we don't stock at the moment, but we will be bringing that in for the summer. We do stock uh, Cozy Posy Fancy and Floof, yes, and we have to apologi apologize Sorry. in advance because uh, we have a couple projects talking about Cozy Posy yarn today, and uh, we are quite low on stock right now, but our restock has gone in, so anything if you ever see is low stock or out of stock and um, you want to know when it's going to be back in the store, you can just send us an email and we'll add you to the notification list and let you know as soon as it's back in. I just want to give a little close up of like how luscious that yarn is. Like just, just, it's just stunning. It just, it's actually pretty mind blowing how me using the same color on three different bases, how the color played out still pretty much like the skein. Yeah. yeah. And how it landed so many times, like all the pinks together. It's just, it's just beautiful. Yeah. This was just, and it was such a, like a really, really fun knit. Sorry about the phone ringing. We are closed, but we promise we answer your calls. <laughs> We're not ignoring you. <laughs> um, yeah. So did you have fun with that pattern? I totally love this pattern. So I found out that, um, Denise just, uh, she uh, made a linen, uh, a version for a lin for oh, that's linen what, yarn. Oh, what thickness? I'm pretty sure it was fingering. I'm not sure 100%, but I'm, it looks like it was. That's really uh, Maybe nice. even DK. I don't know. Uh, she hasn't put it out yet, but I did see a picture of it on Instagram, and it's, ooh, I can't wait to do that one because, you know, me and linen, right? So you usually like to stick with like thin weight yarn. So how was it holding three strands together here? Did you feel like it was this, a bit bulky for This you? wasn't too bad because I really believe that this basically just like, was like a worsted weight kind of, where like something bulkier like a loopy mango or um, that's too much for me. Okay, but so this worsted is, is this okay. This is okay, but it's my favorite sport. Yeah. Sport weight is my favorite uh, weight to, to yeah. knit with, yeah. So did you feel like, um, because that is so out of your color comfort zone. Did yeah. you feel like you felt excited still going yeah, through it? Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. That even, the color, I fell in love with that color when it came in. The sassy yeah, color. I know, I, it is so, so just nice. Just love it, yeah. And I needed okay. an excuse to knit with it, right? And then, <laughs> and then I really I wanted to do the sweater, so I thought, you know. It's nice seeing, I, I like seeing projects, um, in unique colors like that when you see the sample done in something else like yeah. even if you were to see 
um, like a sweater in speckled yarn and then you see a totally solid sample of it. It's so cool to see the different things you could do with yeah. that project. So that's really cool. Um, no, I do. Th that's one more thing I wanted to show is that uh, I do like the drape of it. Like considering, like really you see drapey. the way it, it, it's really actually, it's really, really nice. This is a really nice little cardigan, especially for the spring. Does it, does it fit? You usually don't knit your size. Well, it, 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 it fits, but it's. You wouldn't wear it? <laughs> no, I would if I'm wearing the right blouse underneath. But I didn't really try it on with a bunch of different yeah. clothes. I sort of just tried it on. It did fit, so. I think it would yeah, be I think so I'm, cool I'm going to, to see wear you wearing it. those colors. Yeah. Cause I, those... Well, I did knit it for the shop, but I did yeah. knit it for me, too. Like Yeah. Well, I think it's cool to be able to experiment with different colors, even if because you're knitting it for the shop, you get to play with different colors that you wouldn't necessarily yeah. wear, but you still get to enjoy it. Yeah. And yeah, so that's really cool. No, um, I was so excited to knit with the, with the, with the like the colors that, that, like all of them meshed together, the three bases meshed together. I was like so excited yeah. to knit with that, with that mix. Sweet. So, sweet. okay. Yep. I have two finished objects. So, I am going to oh, you show. Do, yeah. I do, yeah. This is so, so beautiful. This is the rose that grew from concrete, which I had. Um, sh I. Wow, Marie, this talked is about in the last episode. Honey, this is so beautiful. Thank you. Wow, this is really, really pretty. Even the colors. It's super. It came out really big, which I loved Love, because yeah. this is um, a DK See? weight, but I used the Llama Tweed by Camera Rose, and um, that's. The Llama Tweed by Camera Rose is a borderline DK worsted. So it came out, the size was really beautiful. Um, this is really pretty, Marie. And it knit up really quickly. So because it was because it was a thick yarn, it knit up really yeah. quick. I feel like you monogamous knitters have had it down uh, from day one. I honestly don't know how long I'll be able to stick to one to two projects at a time. But I knit this in a week. That yeah, knit. it was that was something. Same with my sweater though. That it knit. Yeah, quick. it knit quick. But it you've quick. always been a monogamous knitter. Yeah, that's why. So I've so okay. We talked about the apocalypse. No, but I meant episode. more for me. I meant more because it was a thicker yarn, yes. so it went quicker. Yeah, yeah I didn't mean it. Uh, so definitely knit we like had that. talked about the Whipocalypse where I cast all of my whips off before I started a new project. And so since then, I've also been hearing a lot of people saying they started their own, that we inspired them to finish bitch. all of their whips. And that's so awesome to hear. I was really excited to see so many yeah, tags on Instagram really cool. doing our, my own Whipocalypse, whip, uh, which yeah. was really cool. So... Yeah. Um, it is a really good feeling to get all of that excess, like all of those excess patterns off of your list and start fresh with something. It just really rejuvenated me. I don't, I don't know how else to explain it. So I have been focusing on just one project at a time and really it's going so quick because you don't have all of these whips that you're working on. It's yeah. just one project at a time. So you're just focusing strictly on that and like I said, I don't know how long I'll last because I know there's that excitement in casting new things on and being able to also pick between projects depending on your mood that day. If you're going to like hang out or you need to multitask and you're watching TV, you don't want something that's going to be too complicated. So you have your mindless knit, then you might have a complicated knit. So I understand that. Um, See, I kind of switched. I've been like, I cast on two things and that's not like me. No, it's not. Because yeah. you're usually one so project at a time. So we'll see how long this lasts. I am definitely loving how quick my projects are going by just Good focusing idea. on one thing. Um, and yeah, it's just making me, it's just making me, I feel like, fly with my projects. So with this uh, rose that grew from concrete, just to talk a little bit about the yarn, I... I'm pretty sure I talked about it last episode too, but it was a pleasure to work with. It is so soft. I love the tweed. This is the first time I've knit with a tweed yarn. And I was actually really grateful that the yarn was a bit busy for the lace section. So I know for sure I made 
I made a couple mistakes somewhere in here. Um, but I can't, I can't see where they are because of the yarn. So I was a bit grateful for that. This was my first lace work chart. It was a very busy lace chart. Everything else about this pattern was extremely mindless until that lace section, yeah. which I did get through and I forced myself to read the chart because I had started and she has the written instructions as well, right? So I was like, I started, <laughs> I started reading the chart and I was like, oh no, I can't do this. So I started reading the actual written instructions and then I was like, I can't possibly come onto the podcast and be like, yeah, no, I ended up chickening out of that chart. So I forced myself for you guys. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy with the finished piece. Um, the bobbles I ended up going with Andrea Mowry again, I, this might be some overlap that I spoke about in the last episode, but I used Andrea Mowry's bobbles, which I think came out really cute, but I have seen even more defined bobbles using a crochet technique. So I would love to learn that, uh, next time I have to work with bobbles. And you know what? The, the color combination you picked was like, is fabulous. I just keep looking at it. It is that absolutely fabulous Thank look at that you um, the next finished object was actually supposed to be a work in progress that i was showing you today and i ended up finishing it last night again oh, focusing so on just nice. one project at a time goes really quick so this is the chev it's chevron mania i keep saying chevron mania hat and this is our Spin Cycle Wilder, which is the light gray, and we just got that yarn in. It is a sport weight, and it comes in two colors only, so light gray and dark gray. Um, I'll put up some combos as well so you could see the different colors you can use with this. And then the color work section is Spin Cycle Dyed in the Wool, and I used Wallflower for this one. So this is a very low contrast color work stunning. hat. And I am a big fan of low contrast color work. So I, I just like the how subtle it is. And as long as you can still see the actual work, I think that's the most important thing. Wow, and it's gorgeous, Maria. Thank you. So I've been I'm wanting so to knit this hat since I first saw it. I forget from where, but um, I had Absolutely to block stunning. my rose cardigan, which we will talk about. And so while I was waiting for that, I casted this on this week. And also a part of wow, me that's really nice cast way. it on because I was like, I oh my gosh, I'm going to just talk about two things. My one finished object and my one work in progress. And I got a little like, this monogamous knitting is so good, like productivity wise, because I'm knitting so quick. But I wonder if people are going to be a little bored only seeing a couple things so a part of what had me cast on now was um like I wanted to show more on the podcast so I'm really curious to hear from you if you would rather see a bunch of projects with slow progress or if you'd rather see a couple projects with quick progress. So I would love to hear from you on that. Yeah, that's a good idea. So yeah, this hat, uh, I have all the Ravelry notes up, so I won't go into it in too much detail, but um, I did add some stitches. So I added 14 extra stitches for the cast on because it was quite small. Yeah. Um, so now this is, this is okay. It's snug on my head, um, but it fits nicely. You said that you liked how it, oh, I love it on you. How I it think fits. It's so so yeah. I'm just, I just prefer a bit more baggy of a, yeah. of a hat. That's, I like slouch hats and yeah. I like the ease, the positive ease of a hat. So a lot of people I know like a snug hat. So, um, yeah, but the original, what they recommended for the cast on was way too small for me. Yeah. It blocked out really but beautifully. But didn't all the notes say, a lot of people were saying that the hat was just too small. Everybody yeah, there were a lot of, um, there aren't too many projects on Ravelry for this hat. And, um, but I was, uh, I was looking at the notes and a lot of people had mentioned that it did come out really small and they also modified the cast on so I had started uh, with what she had recommended because it looked like she actually increased the cast on based on the notes I was reading and then it came out too small so I did rip out and then start again with um, more cast on stitches 
Um, I did just want to mention how incredible Spin Cycle Dyed in the Wool blocks out. So we've had a lot of people in the past talk to us about like how does this block? I'm not really liking the texture so far. And we always tell them like to, if they don't want to continue through the project and then later find that they still didn't like how it blocked, to just test a little square squ swatch and to see for themselves how it blocks out because it really blocks out nicely. Um, it looks pre-blocking very wrinkled and shriveled and uh, it's a bit more structured. And then once you block it, it's quite soft and um, it just really blossoms. But there's a lot of extreme excitement knitting with uh, with uh, Spin Cycle though. Yeah, because the honestly, they're their color options are just so cool honestly i love the gradient effect of the yarn it's not just loving the color of each strand we've talked about this on our uh, podcast before that it is a marled yarn so you're getting two colors in one strand yeah and then on top of that it's changing it as yeah. you're going through which is just this beautiful progression of color and it's quite exciting knitting with it. So um, Very exciting. whether it's Too like exciting. A, a plain project or um, a really like intricate project, uh, I think it's just really, really fun knitting with Spin Cycle dyed in the wool because it's, again, there's just such a beautiful progression of color and it makes it so exciting paired with the excitement of a new project. So it's just, it's a really fun yarn to work with. Um, but I would just, tell you about that uh the blocking part to not be worried pre-blocking if you're new to dyed in the wool and um that to be prepared as well that as you're knitting through sometimes you'll be getting super thin sections and um it does block out after so i will show a picture of what it looked pre-block um it was it Again, because it goes in and out sometimes of thickness consistency, it makes it a bit hard to maintain um, a consistent tension, but then it just blocks out like yeah, magic. Yeah, it's stunning. It's absolutely stunning. So that is the Chevro, Chevro Mania hat by Amy Miller. Very nice. Again, I keep calling it Chevro Mania. Um, but yeah, so that is my second finished object since our wow. last conversation together very nice so now on to works in progress okay <laughs> yes i'm next so right now what i'm gonna show you is gonna be a bit strange but i did the front piece so i'm working on uh the carrington it's a digilpin pattern and they're doing a knitting cow right now for that and knit along so how the construction of this sweater um works is that you're gonna do the front and the back exactly the same the two arms and then when you're connecting it you're gonna they're gonna um, she created like a gusset that's gonna go up so you're gonna knit all these pieces together and create this uh gusset and then basically make the rest of the Is neck that complicated for... and, and sit well i read through it it looks it looks fine for me like I, I i think i understand what to do um so i did get the front piece done and uh, so this is my provisional cast on the white part, so don't pay attention to that. But that's basically wow. going to be the front. Wow. So that is so Yeah, that'll so be nice. the front. So the back will be the same. It's going to probably fall a little bit lower here like that because then we're going to make the gusset here. But basically it's like that. It's a really, really pretty pattern, maybe a little bit. It's one of those... That is so gorgeous. It's like, a, like one of those big baggy tops. I'm doing the size small, believe it or not. Because I took the measurements so and I the, thought, wow, this is going to be... Oh, yeah, the then you got your here. your little lace at the that bottom. That's stunning. right. Stunning. The back looks really cool, too, how it's... Yeah, and there was at one point me and Vanessa... Vanessa thought that the back was the right <laughs> side. And then and I said, it no way, really tell cool. me that that's not true. Because then I had to start again. <laughs> and then I said, yeah, no, this no, no, really this nice. is the right way. Yeah, it's really nice. So I love I'm, the lace section at the, at the I actually really nice enjoyed stuff. this. Uh, obviously, I enjoyed it because it's with my... <laughs> beautiful yarn that Take I love so thing. much but it is a really really nice pattern so right now I'm about to cast on um, start the second piece That's and awesome. uh, then the arms are going to be basically all that lace work all the lace work is like all down the arms which is gonna be a lot of fun I'm doing the driftwood that was the driftwood color 
and uh, Vanessa's doing furs, which is the that nice yellowy color. That's yeah, the same as the so picture. Nice. It's the same color as this picture. Yeah. And then um, Wilma is doing um, Heather Bell, I think. Okay. I'm what pretty sure is she is, and it's like this this lavender color, just so gorgeous. That is so so. And nice. then Sue is doing um, Lynette, I think. I think she got the brand yes. new color. Which yeah, we which have we'll show here you. To show you. Yeah. Um, by the way, so we are very community oriented. So if you hear us dropping random names and we're not referring them to a, another last, podcast yeah. or business, um, you can just assume that they're community members here. Uh, we do have a hangout space. So when we're open, we have people who hang out here throughout the week and on the weekend. So it, community is very important to us and they're a huge part of our journey. So um, if you're ever wondering who's this person that they're not uh, referring to like yeah. a business or whatever, uh, that you could just assume is a community member of ours. Yeah. Um, so we may as well show the new yeah, colors of well Digilpin, which I'm seriously obsessed with these colors. So this is Digilpin Lalande, and we spoke about this, I believe, in episode one. My mom was going on and on about her favorite yarn in the whole world. Yeah, I was still running. I just woke up and I was still running down the stairs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so she explained it as if you want to wake up in the morning and run to, to your want knitting, it. you need to try <laughs> this yarn. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we talked about this in the first episode, but in case um, you missed that, this is Digilpin Lalande, and these are two new colors. So this is the Lynette, and this one is Purse Purselin. Yeah. So I am so in love with these colors. Like, this is a... This is a stunning blue, bluey, like, And it's funny, because it, back up a little bit, because the colors aren't playing out as much as they would. That's a little bit, like, I feel like the closer you get, the more they're a little... No, a little you could see out. it awesome, I think. You think that's a match of a color? Okay. Absolutely. So this is, like, a greeny blue, just so gorgeous, and this is, like, a, a dusty blue. They're just so, so, so gorgeous. Yeah. Um, and Yeah, so Sue's doing this new color. That's the color Sue chose. And in episode one, you were talking about how it's a bit surprising how incredible the stitch definition is. Actually, can we show them that again? Yeah. So just take, to show take, this a uh, bit closer hands. up. The stitch definition on this is incredible. It's so soft. And it's a, it is a bit surprising because of the loose ply of this and the crimped kind of look. Um, so every time we show people this, they're always surprised to see a sample. Yeah, it is true though. When you look, when you, I'm just looking at this and going, yeah, there's a big difference from yeah. looking at that yarn. So it is absolutely gorgeous. And these are the two new colors that we just received in. I did a good job, smell, mm. so good. Yeah, it does smell good. I think I, I, think I used uh, Yazoo from uh, the Soak Wash. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was nice. Okay, are you going on to another one or me again? Um, I'll, I'll go. So, I have my rose cardigan to talk to you about. Okay. Which I'm really excited about. So, I cast on the rose cardigan as soon as I cast off the rose that grew from concrete. So that went to block and this got cast on and I was so so super excited because I have been dying to knit this like I said since I saw Angie's rose cardigan and I yeah. tried it on I just loved it so much and so I am finally knitting my dream project which I'm so excited about. So this, sorry, before I show this to you, so it's not a bit weird that you're wondering what are you showing. Uh, if you haven't heard of the rose cardigan or you aren't familiar with the pattern, it's knit in four quadrants. So it is a cardigan and you start by knitting it in four quadrants and then after that section, uh, you seam everything together. So um, this is my color combo. So now this is what, an arm or what? Honestly, I'm not too sure. <laughs> yeah, because you have to, I guess it's one piece. No, it's not. We'll see where yeah, everything's going. Yeah, because you're kind going. of sideways, didn't you? Yeah, you, this? well, yeah. okay, so you start with the cuff here. So let me show that to you. So you start with the cuff 
and then you work your way up. This is going to be a sleeve, but then this is either the front or back. I don't remember yeah, if this is the front or back. Kind of, exactly. Um, but it has this beautiful cable running through. Yeah, you did a fabulous and it's really job, cool. Marie. I'm really proud of you. You're doing, um, the right side is reverse stocking net, so you were surprised to see that you never realized Yeah, I that never it was... realized when I, when I, every time I looked at the picture, I never noticed that, but I love it. Yeah, it's really nice. It's it, well, it makes the... It makes the colors melt better together than yeah, seeing it on the stocking net side, which is much more defined with the once you start introducing the different colors. But on reverse stocking net, it just melts it a bit better. Yeah. So, um, okay, about this pattern, let's talk about that first. Um, I have not started seaming. Obviously, these are all in pieces. Um, but so far, so I can't speak to the seaming, but I can speak to this quadrant piece right now. It is so much easier than what I was reading and freaking out about. Um, sh Andrea Mowry, she includes this chart to help you uh, follow along with what you're supposed yeah. to be doing throughout the, each quadrant. And it is, once you know how to read that chart, uh, she gives a description on how you read it and everything. You're good to go. It is so much easier to follow than the written instructions. I don't, if anybody out there has knit this and they followed the written instructions instead of the chart, kudos to you. Um, the chart is just so simple to follow and really honestly mindless like I was able to knit this. I was watching TV the whole time yeah. for every quadrant. And you did it fast. Actually, Wendy from the In Stitches podcast, she had said when she knit hers, I was supposed to knit it with her and took too long. So she fin started and finished before I was even able to start. Wendy. But, well, that was my fault because we were ready to go. Um, but she said that. She said it actually feels like you're knitting it really quickly because you're knitting it in quadrants. And so the quadrants, they're small pieces. So it just feels like you're flying through it. Um, okay, so that's the pattern. So for anybody out there who has heard of the rose or has just heard about it now and um, it seems kind of intimidating, again, I can't speak to the seaming side yet, which I've heard is a bit complicated. We'll see how that goes. But I can You'll speak to the fine. quadrant so far and super simple to do. So we will talk about the seaming next episode and see if I will still say this yeah. was a simple pattern. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so that is about the pattern. Let's talk about the yarn. So I am using Cozy Posy Fancy. Again, I apologize that we're low on stock. We've sold out on quite a few colors, so our restock is in. But again, just send us an email if you're waiting for something to come in and we could add you to our notification list. So this has been so, so incredible to work with. This I is know. the first time I have worked with Cozy Posy Fancy. And honestly, I am obsessed. Like, so this is a Merino Cashmere Nylon Blend. And it has this soft glow to it. Like, I don't know if you could really see too well on the camera. But it has this soft glow glow to it the stitch definition is phenomenal like look at look at this cable the how defined yeah. that cable is and it's really nice to knit with it it's it is nice so piece. nice to knit with this yeah. it has a beautiful elasticity like i find this has such a bounce to it and is so so nice yeah. um you did a really good job with this marie thank you um can i open these or am i yeah sure am i absolutely um so it has a beautiful elasticity to it and it is so light when you're knitting with it like it does not feel heavy as you're holding it it feels so light and honestly it just is such feels like such a luxury knit with the cashmere you could the softness is impeccable um and again just can't with, figure out how this is gonna be worn i can't remember if that's front or back but yeah. These are the sleeves. So these are the sleeves, and then this oh, is going to be they, like the front. Yeah, and then they all get it. The Ooh, this is yeah. gonna be so nice, Marie. Imagine when you're probably gonna do a three needle bind off here. Am I correct? 
Yes. You're, oh, it's going to so be so nice. The back here. side is three needle bind off because if you see in the pattern, the back has a seam that you could, uh, a noticeable seam, Don't worry, which I'm is not, a beautiful like, design that. feature. Um, but even just the idea to like just kind of like. Oh! I love it so much. It's Honestly, so the, colors the colors just melted too. together, which I was wow, so this excited yarn is about. Fabulous. Like, it is really nice. You block this already, so it they is, tell you to do yes, that, right? So you block once you're done all of the quadrants. Wow, that's gorgeous. She actually tells you to block at the end of each quadrant, but um, I'm sure most people just block yeah. them all together. I would think that it's uh, um, and get them all out of the way at once, which is what I did. So. Um, yeah, the colors, I love how they're melting together. I'm just absolutely, absolutely loving this yarn between the pattern being a really, again, simple so far, and the yarn, it's just such a luxury knit. I am loving it so much, and I highly, highly recommend this yarn. And if you don't see the color in stock right now, again, just let us know and we'll notify you when it's back in stock. So, um, I know I'm continuing for a while with this project, but first of all, it's my dream project, so I'm gushing a little. Yeah. And um, I have I I have heard a few people really wanted to knit this and don't end up doing it because they're, they're intimidated yeah, by it. Yeah, very intimidated by this pattern. But it's uh, you're right about the the chart. I remember even Ange saying that once she figured amazing. out the chart, it was like it's a really amazing. nice knit. So I do have a few, I, I do want to talk a little bit about the tools um, that have really facilitated this yeah. experience for me. So um, PS Woodsy and Wild Bag, which I totally <laughs> prepped. Oh, that really just helped, to, right? Yeah, just really to helped, right? show that last episode I was talking about which color should I get. I ended up getting two. I got the pink and the pickle, the lime green one, because um, I couldn't choose. So... This has yeah. been my rose cardigan home, and it is a it is a spacious home at that. Um, it is very very big. There's and with my the, notions pouch. Without this tool of where you you uh, where you laid your project, Rose would have been so sad. Without what? <laughs> Without laying your project oh. in there. <laughs> So, okay, very spacious. I'm loving my woodsy and wild bag. Also, this feature, um, this, these handles are so convenient. Really nice. yeah. I love having these handles on this bag. Um, it's just so nice being able to pick it up like this instead of having to hold it under your arm. So, it's been amazing. So, um, I guess that's one of the tools for this project, but not the one I was going to talk to you about. Yeah. Okay. This is one that you can't live without. This is, yes. So, I see Maria using this all the time. This is my magnetic maker's keep from Coco Knits. And um, this is just a slap bracelet. So you just put it on your wrist and it just slaps on. Um, so it's adjustable. You don't have to worry about different sizes. So I, I'm i not going to lie to you. When this bracelet first came in, I was like, really? Yeah. Really? Who needs? Yeah. It's just getting a little excessive now. But I am eating my words because I seriously, seriously am obsessed with this tool. It is so amazing. I would recommend it whether you're doing um, any cable project or if you're doing something where you, it's really important like for you rows. to be tracking your rows because this is just so convenient for me. I keep my cable, so these are, all three of these are cocoa knits. I have my magnetic makers keep bracelet. Um, they're cable needle and their row, row counter, counter, which their row counter also, besides it being magnetic and being able to work with this magnetic keep, it locks which is which just is amazing, amazing. Yeah. and one time i was i actually found this out um a little while ago i was i pulled it out to show a customer and it wasn't clicking and i was thinking in my head oh my gosh it's broken and i'm trying <laughs> to sell this row counter <laughs> and then i found out it's because it locks which is just so awesome because yeah. i always worry when i do have to use row counters for projects that it's going to click in the bag and this one locks and i use it religiously lock once I'm done throw it back in my bag don't have to worry 
So I used for this chart, this row counter throughout the entire thing. So usually what I do is I'll check mark throughout my pattern, but since I'm going through this chart that has like 200 something rows, um, it was much easier for me to use a row counter and I was getting frustrated. I started using my regular red, um, I think it's Clover or yeah. Knitter's Pride, my regular red row counter and um, it was working at first, but because there again are so many rows and I'm doing this for each quadrant, it was just getting annoying putting it on my knee and it was slipping off or putting it on the couch and now I don't know where it is. Um, so I pulled this out and I started using this it was just so easy at the end of every row click and then continue instead of having to keep putting it down picking it up finding where it is yeah that's so yes true. exactly same with you the cable needle. Paper and all of a sudden your cables underneath it's true and whatnot. because that's the yeah, same that's thing so that was true. happening with yeah. the cable needle is I was like I don't know where it went I just had it I'm freaking out um, or I have it held in my mouth and so this is just super easy I would pick up snap it back onto my magnetic heap and it has seriously truly been amazing as a tool companion throughout this project um, again I've used it before for other cable projects um, this is the first time I'm using this row counter with it and it's just made it so so convenient and easy of a knit so I am a huge fan of this um, I love it so much and highly recommend it so that's that and, and then there she was means that because she <laughs> actually uses it all the time and um, the last tool that I would really recommend for this is our um, our clover yeah, circular really stitch needs. holders so what you're supposed to do for two of these quadrants is actually put your stitches on hold so whether you are using your um, whether you're putting sleeve stitches on hold or you That's have to really put neat. something like this on hold or you want to actually put a project on hold completely so you could use needles these stitch holders have been so so awesome um, because I personally really really don't like using waste yarn I've done it before I don't like feeding it through the tapestry needle feeding all of that through then taking it off then picking it up is just so frustrating for me personally. I don't know if that's you, but for me, yeah. it, it's always so frustrating picking back up from waste yarn because it's so flimsy. This, because you have that plastic cord structure, it is so easy to pick back up off of the needles after. Um, so yeah, that that has been something for me as well. Is that the short or the long one you're using? I think this is short. Yeah, I meant I to actually um, measure that arm. before the podcast but yeah these are the short ones so if I had um, a long done it again I would have used the long one uh, which would have been even better for this so yeah. these are the shorts and I use these for every time with putting sleeve stitches on hold and now I'm using it for this and then it is... also has the needle right so when you're going to you could actually almost knit it right off this exactly well wow. yeah it's because a tight but so it has this but it's easy enough to like just slide right yes so it has this needle at the end that just pops that yeah. pops right off so that locks and it's it in firm. there it stays on because i know i was worried once and i thought oh it's gonna come it does line off. it stays on it does stay on so yeah and then you just scoop it up off of the off of this holder so easily without yeah. having to catch stitches on yeah. your waist yarn because it will catch sometimes in the strands so those are my four, the Coco Knits Row Counter, um, Cable Needle, Magnetic Keep, and the Clover uh, Stitch Holders. Those are the four tools that have just been really, really amazing in this project that I wanted to talk about. So yeah, that is my progress since Very the nice. last episode. Yeah. And... Um, I'm really excited. So next, now that these are all done blocking, I'm going go to on to your, your go on phase, to the right? seaming. Yeah. And I'll I'll do the ribbing first. I I'm pretty sure you'll have to. Um, I didn't. I, I'm not a read ahead kind of person. Yeah. That's um, okay. I read it a bit, but I don't have it memorized what I'm supposed to be doing next. But I'm sure I'm gonna have to seam everything, and then I'll pick up to do the ribbing on the cuffs and body. I am very, very excited. Oh, so very exciting.
So, what, oh yeah, I have one more thing to show. I've been bad starting uh, new projects. Not bad. It's hard. It's hard to like keep control of yourself. No, after I think so after things. I finished the um, the Carrington the front piece, I I felt that I just wanted to have a little bit of a switch. Uh, yeah. Because there's a lot of like there's a lot of lace involved and there's a lot of um, cables involved yeah. and so. So you wanted something a bit. Yeah, more. I just wanted something to just kind of like mellow me down. <laughs> so I, hear that. I started this project a little while ago actually, but I picked it back up because I was thinking, you know, what am I gonna knit? I wanted I didn't a bit even of a know break. You were making this. Yeah, so I'm making um That's the so ramble pretty. sweater. I'm pretty sure it's a pretty good picture. Let's see if you can see it a little that bit is better. So so pretty. This is all by itself. It's a really pretty sweater. So I'm using the Gilead from Durerum. And I'm actually basically trying to mimic the same. I, I really like the colors that they use. I love that yarn yeah. so much. The yarn is just amazing. So these are the two colors that I'm going to use. And I, I'm i about to join in the round. So basically what you're doing with this pattern is you, you start off, obviously, you're going to put your markers in and you're going to start doing your increases to build up for the arm. But then you divide for the arms as I did. And you continue doing your increases, so it's still opened, right? So now I have about four more rows of increases to do, and then I'm going to join it in the round. I'm oh, basically, for the v -neck. yeah, I'm basically for the V-neck, right? So yeah. see how it's shaping. That's so I really do need cool. another four, and then the, then then you do the V-neck at the um, the ribbing of the V-neck at oh, the end. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah. So I guess you do the ribbing afterwards. Yeah, you can do it afterwards, really but it nice. is—it's a really nice, interesting V-neck too. It's like got a little I bit of detail. I love that shape. I love the yeah, big sleeves and, and the big cuffs. Yeah. So, so by the way, just a little. This is what I do for my arms. I was uh, just noticing that. Okay, I do that. This is like a looks. Like, I think this is a twelve or sixteen inch needle. I just put actual little needles on mine with the little end stoppers and then this way I, I knit right off of there so they're it, actually the same size as my project that's smart. and uh, I basically just start knitting off them because I'm going to stay with this yes. right so they're already prepped for me and um, I'm that's just gonna awesome. start knitting the the sleeves I really point. don't like using waste yarn I know some I people that's either. all they use but um, maybe I got that from you I yeah. just I've tried it, but I just feel like it's so fiddly. So to have something sturdy This is another like this, yarn that blocks out amazing. Look at like how tonal it is too. It's so nice. So it's so such beautiful. a beautiful. It is really, wow. really nice. Wow. I love the feeling of this yarn. Yeah. It's um in case you're not familiar with Gilead from Durerum. It is a worsted weight yarn. It has, would you consider it a, a, a rustic? Um, when I hear it depends. rustic. If, if we're saying rustic as in uh, that it's non-superwash, definitely. Because it's it's non-superwash, yeah. right? But rustic, if you're using rustic as, it's, it's like scratchy or whatnot. No, this yeah, is actually it's nice not. and soft. So this is a non... But it is considered, like, in the families of, like, the rustic, just yeah. non-superwash. Because it has a structure to it. So structured in the sense of um, it has a bit of a density to it. And um, the stitch definition is incredible. But it's not scratchy. Yeah. I would say if you're super sensitive, like, your skin is very, very sensitive to wool... Um, this might be a bit itchy on your skin. I feel like I have sensitive skin and this doesn't bother me at all. No way. I do too. And this is like, no. Well, and if, I don't know if you've ever touched nightshades in person, but our dad, when he came in, my dad wanted me to knit him a hat. We chatted about that too in a previous and episode. And he thought that was a... He thought stretch. nightshades was, Whoa. he said, was itchy for his skin. Oh, okay. Um, he said it, it bothered him a bit. Um... Or it might have been, uh, I think it was Nightshades. And then I showed him this and he said he didn't mind this one at all right on his head. So, yeah, I wouldn't say this would be, it definitely is not crisp. There is no, like, crispness to it yeah. or that wooly wool feel. Yeah. It just has a beautiful density that to it. That scratchy feel, which I love. Yeah. I love knitting you love the scratchy. scratchy. <laughs> I, need to, Linen, I need to try. Scratchy, yeah. I need to try because... Um, you really, really love 
that wool yeah. wool yarn yeah. and I have yet to work with like a crisp yarn like a tuku wool that seems so scratchy like you loved working with that and I don't know how I'd feel I have to, I have to try it though can't knock it till you try it yeah. so um, love and I this. really, really love nice the way one. the hand dyers are starting to dye on on uh, rustic yeah. yarns. I really think that's neat. Like that's really exciting. Yeah, it's really nice because it, it gives people who love the wools and not just love them. That's all they want to work with. Yeah, it gives them an chance. opportunity yeah. to work with something that's a bit more tonal and variegated. Right? Very true. Okay, I got one more little thing to show. Do you okay, are you that's finished? exciting. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm done. I am. Um, Please tell me what you prefer because I I uh, I am super curious to hear like I uh -oh. asked before. Yeah, just it's okay. It's okay it. Yeah, um, if you would prefer to see uh, a bunch of proje projects but slow progress or uh, just a few but quick progress. Yeah. So okay, what's the I other one you wanted to show? I think it's probably number two. Um, the most they're gonna like vote for. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oops. Anyway, so I was I want to show a couple of things before okay. you get going on. So this one here um, was knit from Vanessa, and it's called uh, it's a Shibui pattern. It's called Scroll, and it uh, you need two um, Shibui silk cloud and two pebble. I love to do this. The but it's really pretty like, in their designs. Yeah. Like it's just so classy, minimalist, so classy. and subtle but Whoa, so really nice. beautiful yeah and it feels nice this is like uh so what are the bases this is silk pebble cloud and, and pebble? silk cloud yeah this is really really pretty oh that looks good with what you're wearing does it? it really does look at the way it pops i it think does. you should wear that throughout i don't know vanessa might say hey what you doing i think she'll no. be pumped yeah. like oh you're wearing actually my how scarf? vanessa would wear it like this wait let's wear it like vanessa would wear it because this is herschel Vanessa, hopefully I'm doing it right. This is how Vanessa would wear I think wear, she yeah. keeps one in the front. No, no? she doesn't. <laughs> I'm with her more than, than you are. Okay, Vanessa, you let me know tomorrow. Oh, that looks so good. You should wear it for the rest of the episode. No, I'm too hot. Why? I'm having my hot flashes again. <laughs> okay, fine. It looks really good with yeah. what you're wearing. It's beautiful. Green though. is a nice color on you. Oh, why, thanks, Marie. Oh, you're welcome. That's really nice, Vanessa. Thank you for letting us show this. And um, okay. you said there's one more. Um, it's not it's show. not a, a sample, but I want to show a service that we'll be offering in the fall. I just want to show you how cool this turns out. So we've mentioned that we have a sock machine, and um, this is how... I'm going to get the tubes going. I'm going to show you two of them. That's exciting. We carry, yeah, we carry the Cozy Knitter. We're going to be doing a restock next month, so we're going to be getting a, some new colors, some colors that we're sold out on. But this is what I'll do. I'll grab her socks, like her sets, and I'll do the tube and leave the mini like that, and uh, we'll just put it there. This way, when people want to do quick socks towards the holidays and they want to give out gifts and or whatever you... And this is a you, Christmas... Uh, colorway. Yeah, here. this is uh, this is one of my favorites. So, I had it ready in a tube, so I just thought I would bring them to show. But this is this is luscious. This. Uh, so colorway. we'll have to talk about how it's going to work. But yeah. pretty much, you'll be able to pick your sock yarn. And I'll then have them we'll... ready. I don't know so much if we'll be taking those types of orders. Oh. We might, but most likely we're gonna do a whole bunch of them, okay. and then they'll go on the website like this, and they can buy and them. And then they'll come with your mini skein. Yeah. That's true, too. Yeah, it's oh, possible. Yeah, I'll tell you saying. why I don't know 100% I can take those types of orders. is because it's very, very hard on your arm and your hand. I'm, I'm and, glad you um, brought this, actually, because we were talking about the Cozy Knitter. Um, this, she's amazing. Look we at her. We were talking about In Bloom, though, last time, and we were saying how um, she has this fading yeah. effect, which is really cool. So now this is it actually knit up, yeah, which is just amazing. so cool how it fades like that. So she does a really good yeah. job with her dyeing. It's beautiful. So that's exciting. So yeah. Um, so you do the afterthought, uh, the afterthought heels and toes, and uh, yeah, that's what you're doing. I don't know if I mentioned already, but make sure you're signed up for our mailing list, which you can do through our website. Um, so anytime we come up with, we have updates like that, we'll make sure to send um, a mail out so you can stay up to date yeah, with that. Yeah, definitely. Stuff. 
Okay, Marie, do you have anything else to show? No, Isn't I don't, it? but we have now product stuff to show you, and uh, we mentioned a giveaway, so... That's did, right. Did I talk about the show notes at the beginning? I think so. I, I think. mentioned that already. Yeah. Okay, so I have notes here so that I can stay on track. Um, I did want to mention, actually, that we've had some comments about it being a little low and we should invest in a microphone so we started looking at uh microphone options but we're we're not really we have no knowledge of yeah. this equipment at all so we're just trying to find what works best for our iphone or mac and um yeah if you know of any microphones that you've personally used that are um that work are compatible uh let us know so we're yeah. we are looking into that and we appreciate your feedback um okay so let's see what i have for updates um oh so we have announced through our um mailing list again make sure you're subscribed to that through our website that we are going to be doing a weekly knit night every Monday. So hanging out at the shop and having our knit socials have been a huge part of who we are as a company since we've opened. It's always been about that community aspect for us. And so we've been doing our Sunday hangouts in the store, um, I think in the second or third month of being open. And so we've really been missing those and we know our community has been missing it a lot. And so I know our government has started to talk about loosening up restrictions um, that retail stores should be opening soon. Um, we wanted to be doing something in the meantime to make sure that we're continuing to be a source for everyone to connect in and hang out and yeah, just have and that. Yeah, and have that fun experience with. So we are now doing a weekly virtual knit social every Monday at five. Uh, we are going to be doing it until June 1st and hoping, hoping that we'll be able to open by then. But if not, we'll continue to do our weekly virtual hangout so we can still continue doing that with you. Um, I'm not going to post the Zoom link here. So if anybody wants to join that, you can just send us an email and I'll send you the invitation. Um, and we also have that we mentioned we did our first virtual hangout this past Monday. And we mentioned on there that you could join our Facebook group. It's called TKL Squad. And uh, that's just a space for us to be able to continue connecting in throughout the week and staying in touch like that. So you are all more than welcome to join us there. Um, so that's that, the virtual knit social. Uh, Want to talk a bit about the shop renovations? Okay. So uh, we mentioned that we started the renovations on the lower level. For those of you just tuning in, we are expanding our physical space. So right now we have, um, which we haven't done a tour or anything, but we have our space right now, but we do have a shop next door that we were that we secured last year 2019 yeah. and uh, we started the renovations on the lower level first so that we could get our stock room ready and we could start moving stuff over and creating space to start the renovations upstairs so um we are now starting to fill up that stock room. Yeah, it's, it's actually wonderful having a stock you room. You have done yeah. so much work. I worked really hard. She, so my mom has been taking lead on the renovations and stock room. Can um, you imagine? She's letting me be boss for something. Wow. Thanks. So man. she is doing like a really incredible job. We had everything. Uh, we were starting to pile stuff in the space that we just got last year. And then we had what was our stock room. It really wasn't a stock room. It was just like a pile yeah. in the corner that was hidden. It was awful. Uh, not well from customers. And it yeah. was just a nightmare. And so... Now that we have that space to organize stuff in, it's just been amazing. And you started moving everything over. Yeah. So I just went down there today and all of the stuff. So what happened was it was brought downstairs into the stock room. So everything was in boxes on the floor. And now um, we're very family oriented of a business. So my dad has been helping us a lot. He's been um, doing a lot of the physical work for the renovations and he started putting up the shelves for us. So um, you got everything off of the floors and now onto the shelves. Yeah. 
which is so exciting. Yeah, me and Dad, and Vanessa's helping a lot too with yeah. that. Yeah. If you're an organization person, I know um, you can appreciate the excitement of that. So we're very excited, and our team, when they return, are yeah. going to absolutely They're, freak they out. They are going to freak <laughs> out, and so exciting. I have to say, though, that now that we're filling orders and stuff, and, and I already got started on uh, organizing the stock room, it is the stuff that's in there that I get to go to for, for to fill orders. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing how organized it is and how quick you can grab everything. The girls are going to love it. Because it was a nightmare. Yeah, Honestly, we were, we were calling it the hellhole. Yeah. It was... <laughs> You would like go it to the back. It was neat and everything, but it was like yarn piled on top, and then you take one bag from the bottom, and everything, everything collapses. Would collapse. It like, was oh. like an absolute nightmare. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I was so mean yeah. of a boss because I'd always send the girls to go and grab the yarn from there. Like yeah. I would just do everything to avoid it. I I really did not like it. So I can. Well, I'm wait. really happy though that you you were really happy to see. Yeah, it how is it was so... turning out. So exciting. Yeah. So now we have started officially the renovations yeah. upstairs. Where are we getting? Um, so honestly, guys, the design is done and you are going to freak it out. Is so it is like nice. oh yarn store dreams. Like I I am so, so excited. We're going to do a whole grand reopening. It's going to be after COVID. Yeah. Um but when we're able to actually show you the new shop, renovated new space and everything, I am just so excited for you to see it. Um, I, we yeah. can't wait. We're so, yeah, so excited and exciting. can't wait to show you and can't wait for you to see. So yes, that is for the shop renovations and we have some product updates and a giveaway to talk about. So since so the last episode, uh, we've gotten some new stuff in, so I'll just show you quickly yeah, that we so got briefly. new colors in from Loopy Mango. This yeah, is they're the really pretty. Merino number no. five, which These is a super bulky, colors, yeah. and they just released three new pastel colors. So these two are Rococo blue and, and pink. pink. Yeah, and this one is the lavender. So pretty. Really pretty pastel colors. So these are really nice and now available online. Um, we also got their entire line for um, their new cotton yarn, which is called Summer. Uh, so we got all the colors in. Uh, we just have to get them on the system, but they're here. So and yeah. they're, it's beautiful. That's and that's a, beautiful a thick yarn. That's thick that's as well. It's cotton. not super bulky uh, like this but one. It's but it's bulky enough. It uh, knits up really quick, and uh, I would call it chunky weight for sure. It, it's it's thicker than worsted. It's got to be chunky. Okay. Or Aaron, Aaron weight. Yeah, Aaron weight. We'll have that up soon. Yeah. Uh, we just need to take pictures of it. Um, okay, so then we got our Kohana restock. So we got new products in and restocked on other products as well. Um, so this is the Kohana tool case, which is has been really popular. People have really been loving this. So it close it comes like this that you could just wrap and close it yeah. and then and it's really made well open it's it really, up really nice it's a beautiful like tweed tweed fabric it's just gorgeous yeah and then that's really cool so once you open it up oh yeah you can, so you're putting your needles there so just to see you can put your needles in here little notions yeah it even has and a there's little a zipper, zipper here. Yeah, to yeah. keep some stuff that's really neat so this is really, really, this is, I think, waxed canvas is the material that they're using. It's really nice, sturdy yeah, material. Yeah, it's a very strong canvas, for sure. Um, so all of our Kohana is on our online store. Uh, we restocked on our large snips, which have been also um, really popular. Um, so these are great to use. You can use these on planes, I believe. Um, and Can you? I don't think you I can think bring the, the snips big ones. The I little think these ones, snips I know you, you can. can. I know the little ones for yeah. sure. But it just oh, pops into that. this safety pouch yeah. here. And then it comes in, um, I think all of their colors come in for, for their yellow, blue, pink, and green, Maybe, I think. Maybe, yeah. <clears throat> so those are the large snips that have been restocked. Yeah, it comes in this pretty box. 
Well, all of their packaging is, is just, just amazing. top of the line. Like, they make sure their packaging is really high quality as well. So these are the mini snips, which are just so, we so never cute. Can keep enough of those yeah, in. these are very hard to keep in stock because they're just so adorable. Yeah. These are the ones she was saying and for they're sure. Good. They work good really, really well. They she's really on planes, good. although a lot of us are avoiding airplanes right now. Um, but these are so tiny and cute. They have their own little uh, leather safety pouch and then you pop them out and they're these tiny little babies. So super cute. Yeah, it's the teal colorway, not the green. Way. There you go. Yeah. Um, this is new in, it's the leather, this leather pouch. So actually I'm going to talk about this in a second and show this, <laughs> this adorable little pin cushion. Vanessa got one of these, no? I think oh, she was yeah. showing us. Don't worry, we'll put that in after. Okay. Um, so these adorable little pin cushions, they're just so cute. They're in a little box and it comes with one pin and then you could add more later, but it comes with a pin that matches the actual cushion Yeah. and this adorable little box. So really cute. Um, I'm again, I'm not, we're not showing all of our Kohana Yeah, because we got products, those glass, we have, uh, we got the glass, um, forget what they're called, but you put the... The glass pin cushions. Yeah, and then you put the pins there, they're, too. We have all the like pins as stunning, well. Stunning, yeah. stunning. Our measuring tape, we're not showing that. Yeah. Um, okay, so the other ones I wanted to talk about, why I wanted to keep these together to talk about is because I feel like these things are really great, especially for the knitter who likes to knit at home, like you. Um, so if you're not one that you really move around too much with your knitting, I find this is a really awesome tool case to invest in because you, so it's this case, okay, that comes on its own. And so this is the well constructed. tool case. And then there are these pockets that are on the outside for extra storage. Um, you could get it alone like this, or you can purchase the little pouches that go with it and put them in to have three that fit in here nicely. And it's just a really nice storage space to keep all of your notions and to stay organized with, which I feel like you can use. Mm. My mom is very much the kind of knitter who knits at home primarily. She doesn't usually bring her knitting out. Um, and she has like this table of all of her knitting supplies and stuff. And it, this is a really great way to keep organized like that. So, and then this leather pouch, I would say would be nice to keep at home as well. Although you could definitely, if you put big stuff in this so that it doesn't fall out because it doesn't close all the way. Yeah. Right? There's that little opening here. So you wouldn't want to put tiny like notions in here stuff. if yeah. you're taking it around with you. But if you're keeping this at your at-home knitting station, then that's fine. And so it just closes like this and you tie that here. Super cute. Very nice. So that is our Kohana restock. And we talked about Die Gilpin already, the new colors. We want to talk about these namaste bags that came in so not just wait to see what's inside this isn't what we're advertising <laughs> um so but i heard it comes in this bag yes it comes yeah. in this bag what this okay so what we're about to show you is a very generous um knitters backpack because so many things come with it i first saw it from steph which is one of, which is one of the girls who uh, knits here and she had come back from the knitters frolic and she got herself a namaste backpack and she was showing it to me and I was like oh my gosh these are amazing there are yeah. so many features and you just brought them in so I'm really really excited so they come in these eco-friendly totes and then you open them up for the actual backpack which is just totally stunning yeah it is really nice this is just like a gorgeous really, really well gorgeous too. like everything yes. about it is like really beautiful so visually aesthetically it is absolutely gorgeous so this is the back it is so nice it's like really and nicely front. made but it's not just aesthetically like incredible it is so 
functional. So we'll talk a bit about all of the things you get with this bag. So starting with this here, there's actually a little um, lotus stitch marker on here, which is super cute. Um, so I don't know if you can see that, but there's oh, this yeah. little lotus stitch marker that comes with it. Then it has this um, clasp to open it. And there are three compartments in this it's knapsack, amazing. which is just incredible. It is so spacious, okay? We showed the back too. There's a little zipper in the back for even more storage. Um, you have the pockets on the side. And then you have these three compartments. So what's cool, um, when I get mine, I'm going to have one compartment with my laptop that I'm going to use when I bring to work. Um, and then a section that I could keep my yarn in and That's that kind of idea. stuff. So you have this compartment here. I think this is the one that I would keep my laptop in. It has this pocket in here. It's nice and cushioned and a bunch of other pockets in here. So two on this side, very spacious. Um, the flat bottom, you could see like there's quite a bit of space here. Then you have the center compartment. And this is where you can keep, sorry if I'm not showing it well, but this is where you can yeah, keep you your yarny well. stuff. And they actually, it comes with this yarn holder. So this is like, um, think of a yarn bowl. So when you have a yarn bowl, you wrap it into that holder so that it pulls out nicely. This, you just put your strand right in so that your yarn is pulling through here through here and you could just be knitting it on the go without worrying about your yarn coming that out and awesome. falling on the floor it's really really cool um i think we checked we were looking because there were all of these features in the product description and we're yeah. like what it comes with all of this so this is actually a measuring tape I think those are inches right? yep. yeah each uh white line is an inch in case you're in a pinch and yeah. you uh need something to measure um they're actually it also comes with this little tiny notebook if you have to just like keep track of your rows or like keep little notes and on the inside it has this tapestry needle so it's really generous with everything it comes with yeah um i believe that's that's it. Well, I don't think I missed anything, but and even the yeah. tassel is very well made. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really, really gorgeous. I have been in love with this since I saw Steph with it. So I'm. I was so excited to hear that it was coming in. And so the colors that we have in there uh, is this color here. We have the white ones and the, the, the pale pink. Um, how many did I bring one. in? I brought four colors in though. I brought in the three. Green. Oh, three I brought colors. in three colors. So we have the cream, the dusty pink, and then this tealy yeah, color. Yeah, that's right. Three colors. But now we have the red as well coming in. And then we ordered in the red. extra alert, like the bigger, bigger backpack. We yeah. ordered um, the black and uh, pale pink and then yes. that one. So, so this those is are the on mini, their way. which is crazy that this is the small one because there's so much space yeah. in this already. So I like the mini one actually because it is still yeah. big, but yes. it's not overdone. Yeah. Where you know, yeah. So okay, those are our product updates, um, and now I believe we just have our giveaway, giveaway to talk about, and then we then we're done. Oh, I didn't talk about my acquisitions. Should I talk about that now or after? Well, I'll talk about that now, and then we'll leave the giveaway till the last thing to be extra dramatic okay so very very quickly um i don't think i'm gonna i'm going to get too into talking about my acquisitions on the podcast because i'm scared if i say it and then i'm locked in and it's yeah. that feeling of like oh no now i have to do it and i want to we'll try this. it quickly just try and see what happens but i do know i will be knitting the love note because there's already pressure to do that and a commitment to do it so um connie had mentioned on her podcast that she's going to be knitting the love note sweater and i've been wanting to knit that for so long so i was like oh i want to knit it too 
we may as well knit it together if you're going to do it soon. So uh, we picked a date. We're going to cast on May 15th. And um, our other com a bunch of our other community members said they wanted to knit it with us too. So uh, super unofficial kind of knit along, uh, which happens a lot here because one of us will be knitting something just like your Carrington, right? So yeah. it's you, Vanessa, now Wilma's knitting that. So yeah. it it's very hard not to be tempted when one of us are knitting something and it's a pattern we all love. So... Um, yeah, anybody who wants to knit that with us as well, we, we don't have a group for it or anything. We're just casting on May 15th and, um, yeah, so I'm really excited about that. I'll, uh, show some of the combos I had put up on Instagram a little while ago when I was fantasizing about my love note. I have to decide if I want to go with something, um, more subtle and solid or if I'd like to try out something a bit more variegated. So we'll see. Um, yeah, so that's all for my acquisition. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> You're really excited for that giveaway, eh? You're like, okay, let's, yeah, go. let's go. Okay, so giveaway time. So we are going to be giving away two prizes, and we will announce the winners in our next episode. And we are going to be, before we talk about how you enter, we'll show you what we're giving away. So... These Aspen bags have been so popular. Um, people have been just ordering them like crazy. Yeah. They really, really did well in the shop. And we already have to restock again. So we are going to be giving away one of these Aspen bags, which um, we've talked about already, are very spacious. You could fit a sweater quantity in yeah. here. And um, beautiful. High quality project bag. And we're going to be giving this cute little frog notions bag by Jay Hendry with cozy posy foo. Oh my god, it all matches. So nice. So this is one prize. Very exciting. And the second prize is our knitting loft tote bag. So we had these made a little while ago and I only have um, one left. So we have this. And it's just a it's just a spacious tote bag with our logo on it, and we'll also be giving with this our sunflower knits lavender sachet, which is really nice to yeah, put with your beautiful. yarns. It smells so amazing, and her all-purpose soap. Yeah. So this soap apparently you could it really is all-purpose. You could use it for your wool. You could use it for your body. Um, I think she even put in there you could use it on your dog. It was so funny. Yeah. So really That's all good. purpose so those are the two giveaways so that what we'll do be they doing. have to do marie to win this now okay so it's it's really not hard so um, first you have to like run three miles and then once you get back <laughs> you have to no I'm kidding <laughs> first you have to give us all of your yarn yeah. <laughs> um okay so you will need to be subscribed to our youtube channel following us on instagram and you need to make a comment under this YouTube video, so episode three, with what is your favorite thing about knitting podcasts? So what is that? It could be maybe your favorite thing is that you like seeing the works in progress, or maybe you love seeing the different yarns, or maybe it's something else entirely. We would love to hear what's your favorite thing about watching knitting podcasts that makes you watch them so excitedly. Um, and if your Instagram handle is different from your YouTube name that you're commenting with, just finish that comment off with your YouTube, sorry, your Instagram handle so yeah, that we can, so we know that they can, yeah, because yeah. we'll need to check that you're following up, you're subscribed to us on YouTube, that you've commented and that you're also following us on Instagram. So we'll yeah. need to check those three things. So if your Instagram is different from what your YouTube name is, just make sure you sign off with that. And then we'll pick a winner at random mm -hmm. and announce those winners in episode four. Whoa. Um, yeah. So that was our podcast for today. Wow. What do you think? How did it go? Fantastic. What did you think? I hope you liked it. Um, yeah. I'm very excited with our progress. I feel like... Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's how that feels. Better so, go home and get knitting. yeah, I know. I've been like running home to knit every day, um, and I'm just knitting up a storm. Yeah, I'm very, you're very. Excited. Yeah, I'm really proud of you. How much you love knitting. <laughs> you're so, like a crazy girl like me now. I know. 
I know. I, I've said it. It's hard to be here and not get absolutely obsessed and addicted. So yeah, that is episode three. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, good luck with the contest. Yeah. And we will chat with you soon. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.